Hello YouTube, this is my second video in which we're going to explore the concepts behind uh, what we call expected value or the mean of a discrete probability distribution. But in this instance, uh, we're going to discuss uh, uh, what it means for a game to be fair. Okay. So in my last video, we talked about playing in a raffle and, and uh, determining on average how much you would win or lose, say, uh, per ticket played. Uh, in this instance, I want to consider what it mean. What does it mean for a game? to be fair okay so let's consider this if you were to play some sort of say casino uh, setup of course and you know you sit down and say it's a dollar to play the game you know so you bet a dollar and you maybe you win or lose you know some amount and you keep betting a dollar you win or lose some amount and it is so balanced that by the time you leave you've played this so many times uh, that you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the number of times you played and eternity and then you were to count up how many you know dollars you won compared to how many dollars you lost uh, what would it mean for this game to be fair? At least on average, how much did you win or lose? Well, a fair game would be a game where you neither won nor you lost. So when we talk about a fair game, okay, so we say a fair game, uh, what we mean is this. We mean that the expected value, uh, E of X, which really is our average here, should equal zero. And of course, this is what we mean by a fair game. You are neither on average expected to win, nor are you expected to lose, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of come up with our own probability experiment. I'm just going to make this up, and I suppose, uh, you know, we could go with a, a game of chance here. So maybe with a die, okay? So we're all familiar with the, I hope, a six-sided die, a standard six-sided die, if we were to fold this out. You know, kind of take a look at what our sample space would look like. We'd say, well, all possible outcomes are listed here. And, of course, the outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, and so since I'm making this up, let's go ahead and start with this. How much do we want to charge a person to roll the die, say, one time? And, I, you know, I'm a high roller here. So we'll say uh, the bet. You know, just to roll the die one time, we'll say it's $5. Okay, but let's talk about the possible outcomes here. Since I'm designing this game, I get to do anything I want. So let's say this, if I roll a one or a two, uh, I want to declare that we win. Okay, and how much do I want to win? I want to win $10 just because I said so. And if we roll, say, a three, ooh, three is big money. Let's call three uh, a win $20. That's kind of nice. Uh, but we say else, okay? So when I say else, we say like a four, a five, a five, or a six, we're just going to say simply, you lost, okay? So we'll lose our money and we don't win, okay? So this being said, uh, we can actually do two things here. The first one I want to do is this. I want to determine, so what is the average amount that I would win if I were to, say, play this game for eternity? What's the long-term average of my winnings and losings? But the second question we're going to ask in this video is this. Okay, so now based upon what we just found out, uh, could we also determine how much we should charge uh, in order to make this game completely fair? Because if I knew that charging point, that equilibrium point, if I'm running the game, I would want to charge more than that amount. I don't want to run a fair game. I want to make it unfair in my favor, okay? And uh, if I'm playing the game, I would want that uh, equilibrium point. I would want to be charged less than that because then I would be expected to win. You know, it would be unfair in my favor. So let's go ahead and start with creating our probability distribution. Of course, uh, you know, we say we have X, which represents the amount of gain in this instance, but all possible outcomes. And then we say the likelihoods of each thing happening. So we say, well, you know, when you play this game, what are the possible things that could happen? Well, I'll tell you one thing that's going to happen. Uh, you could lose $5, okay? So that's one thing that can happen. But, you know, we also see over here we could win $10 or we could win $20. And I'm afraid in terms of the amounts of gain, those are the only possible outcomes that we could... Um, we could consider here. So now what we want to do is we want to actually go through and calculate the likelihood that each of these things actually occurs. Now the interesting thing about this loss here is it is definite. It is all of the time. So regardless of whether you won money or you lost money, you're always paying this $5. So in terms of how many of these six outcomes are going to cause you to lose $5, we could say, well, six out of six are going to call you, cause you to lose the $5. But in terms of the $10, we say, well, how do we win $10? Well, what we know is this. We'll win $10 if we roll a 1 or a 2. So we say, well, how likely is it that we roll a 1 or a 2? And since there are two outcomes out of 6 that give us that, we say it is a 2 in 6 chance. We're going to leave it as 6ths. 
It'll be a little bit more convenient that way. And then last but not least, we say, oh, well, I could win $20, but of course there was only one outcome that would cause me to win $20, one out of the six here. So one kind of disclaimer I want to throw out there is this. Uh, technically, with probability distributions, we say that all of your probabilities here, they should they should sum up to be 100% of the things. And if you look at this, you say 6, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 1, 6 is 9, 6. That's more than one. Uh, it's different, but uh, the reason why is because we're saying that you always lose this five dollars. So I just want to, without having to build in net winnings, I'm just going to say we always lose the five dollars, and we're okay with this. Okay. So now we're going to calculate the average winnings, which means we're going to have to calculate the average or the expected value. And in order to do this, of course, we've been building in this other row that says we'll take everything that can happen in terms of gain times the likelihood that it does actually occur and see what we get for an average winning. So for instance, x times p of x, we say, well, x here is negative 5 times our probability of x is 6 6. So negative 5 times 6 6 is negative 30 sixths. Okay, let me, let me try and stay with our color scheme here. Negative 36, uh, we say, well, 10 times 2, 6 is positive 26 here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then 20 times 1, 6 is 26. Okay, so what we wanted to do was find the average or the expected value, okay, which means we needed to sum all of these. And the sum here, lazily written, of course, is still in 6. But we say, well, negative 30 plus a positive 20, that would be negative 10. And negative 10 plus a positive 20 would be positive 10. So we get 10 sixths, which reduces to 5 thirds. And in terms of a pure dollar amount, we'd say 1.66. So now, hey, this is great news because what this means is we've determined our expected value. But it also means this, a positive $1.66. So essentially, if you were to play this game for eternity and average out your winnings over the number of rolls you had, you would have won on average $1.66 per roll of that die, which means it is unfair. First of all, this game is unfair but uh, in favor of the player, okay? And the reason why is because, well, you're expected to win as the player, okay? So now the, the follow-up question here was this, so how much should we charge if we expect this game to be fair? So we're going to do the same approach here. We're gonna have the same approach. We're gonna list out all the possible things that can happen and their likelihoods of happening, and then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and find their long-term average. We'll just find the average of the expected value. Uh, so we still have the fact that we can win $10 and we can win $20. And my favorite part of this is we still have a, a 1 in 6 chance of winning the $20 and a 2 in 6 chance of winning the $10. Uh, but the simple fact of the matter is this, what should we charge? Okay. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to say we're going to charge, let's see, like D dollars. Okay. And so we don't know what this is. As a matter of fact, this is the thing we're going to find, you know, find what should we charge in order for this to happen. So now when you play your D dollars here, the first question we got to confront is this, do you win that D dollars or do you lose it? Okay. And so the simple fact is we lose D dollars. And so we'll say negative D. Okay. Negative D is what I call, you know, cost me to play this game. But the question is, okay, uh, you know, what is this amount? Uh, so in order to find this, what we're going to say as well, we'll construct our probability distribution, find the average, but we're going to, in order to make this fair, we'll set our average equal to zero and then solve for what D should be in order to make this true. Okay. So let's go ahead and proceed with this. We say, well, what percentage of the time, or at least what's the likelihood that I lose this D dollars? And again, we still say, well, six out of six times I'm going to lose this D dollars. So in this instance, when we actually run through this, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra, but we say, all right, well, 10 times 2, 6 is 26. We see this. 20 times 1, 6 is 26. But we say negative D times 6, 6 is negative 6 times D over 6. And so this time, when we actually take uh, the time to sum these up, what you're going to see is we get a sum that happens to be this. Well, first of all, it's out of 6. And we get 20 plus 20 is 40. And then 40 plus a negative 6D, you get this. You get 40 minus 6D. Okay. So the first thing I want to kind of point out is this. This is the expected value. This is our E of X. But the question was this. What should we charge to make this game fair? And again, remember, fair means you neither won nor lost on average. So if we want this to be fair, what we're saying is this. We want 40 minus 6D over 6 to come out to be an average of zero. And if that's the case, what we can do is we actually can just find this D. 
we'll do some algebra. So for instance, we could take both sides of this equation times 6. You know, so essentially, these cancel out, and we get this left on the left side, 40 minus 6d. And on the right, we discover that, well, we still have 0. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 40 from both sides. We're just carrying out the algebra here. So we'd say negative 6d equals negative 40. And so now we'll divide both sides by 6. Negative 6, that is. And so we get this. We say d is equal to positive $46, or that would be 20 thirds dollars. And if I were to now open up a calculator and say, okay, well, what does this actually uh, simplify down to? We say 20 divided by 3, $6.67-ish. Okay, so we say D is approximately $6.67. Now I'm going to put a big little box around here. Big little box, apparently. A big box, but basically... This is what we determined would make the game fair if we were to charge this amount. So essentially, if I were running this game, okay, this is the amount to charge if it's fair. If it's fair. Okay. So that being said, let's imagine I'm running this game, and this is the construct of the game. The question is, well, how much would I want to charge if I'm running this game and I want to make a profit? And this is exactly what casinos do, and this is exactly what insurance companies do. They say, what's my equilibrium point that would cause us to neither win nor lose money projected-wise? We say, well, $6.67. So if I'm running this game, I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to charge more than this. I might charge you $7. And exactly $7, you might say, well... You know, $7, uh, you know, if you charge six sixty-seven, you'll break even. If you charge $7, that's only another, you know, 33 cents. But I would go so far as to say this, that's 33 cents per roll of the die on average. So if you had somebody playing this game in the long term, what I'm telling you is you are expected to come out on top as the runner of the game. You cannot lose on average. It is simply impossible. So this is why it is guaranteed that casinos make money. They know that they are expected to win given the amounts that they charge or at least the odds that they offer on the game. Okay, So this is what we mean by a fair game. Cheers.